Chapter 9 Matteo transported Vittoria to the arena floor, then braced himself in front of her as she stood like a board at his side. He wished Romeo hadn't seen them crouching in the jungle, but there was no changing history. A voice screamed in his head like a madman. Don't let her meet him. He shouldn't bring Vittoria down here, not so close to Romeo. He didn't know his brother as well as he might have liked these days. Was it beyond Romeo to sacrifice honor and kill her now? Not likely. He couldn't protect the landowners if he were dead. Besides, Romeo wouldn't fully understand Matteo's plan yet. That might be the reason he'd come today. Matteo dismissed his concerns. Let Romeo think Vittoria was just a way to get workers' attention and nothing more. But setting his hope for Vittoria's safety on a tenuous thing like honor didn't help this feel any safer. I wanted her to meet him, he reminded himself. It didn't soothe his deep instinctual fear. Benat and his men followed close behind. Benat shifted to put his body between Vittoria and the guardians who trailed Romeo. One of his other men took up her opposite side. She didn't seem to notice. Instead, she studied Romeo with a pale expression. Matteo, Benat drawled. This isn't. Patience, Benat, he murmured. Matteo widened his stance as Romeo strode toward them, his clip steady. More for Vittoria than Benat, Matteo explained. Honor wouldn't allow him to harm her here, not unless she actively threatened his life. He would lose the network to me and die in dishonor. Benat snorted. Vittoria's hands shook at her sides. Matteo resisted the urge to comfort her as his brother closed in. Romeo's severe countenance gave him a formidable appearance, but he lacked Matteo's innate confidence. Romeo ignored Vittoria completely as he slowed to a stop a few paces away and regarded Matteo through slitted eyes. Matteo? Brother. Romeo's hard expression didn't relax. To what do I owe this dark pleasure? Matteo asked. A visit from a busy man like you is no small gesture. He kept his body in front of Vittoria to give her a moment to prepare herself, but she emerged from behind him on her own. To her credit, she didn't say a word, just studied Romeo with an uncanny gaze. So, you are the girl, Romeo said as he cast a glance at her. A veiled insult. Vittoria was no girl. She wisely didn't take the bait, just regarded him carefully. The two of them stayed locked in a silent contest of wills for an interminable time. She didn't curtsy the way a landowner would have. She watched, noted, ascertained him as equally as he did her, maybe out of sheer fear and lack of know-how. Romeo shifted one shoulder back after the silence extended beyond formal comfort. My name is Vittoria, she finally said. Although her voice trembled, it didn't detract from her power. One day, you may call me majesty. Romeo lifted an eyebrow, glancing at Matteo in question. Matteo stared back. The urge to laugh nearly overcame him. You have come to ensure fairness, I assume, Romeo said to Matteo, as if Vittoria hadn't spoken. Always. Are you satisfied? So far? This meeting was no accident. Matteo had told Benat's guards not to be too careful as they gleaned information and surreptitiously offered generous food buckets to the witches. He wanted Romeo to know he had come, wanted Romeo to meet Vittoria on his terms, away from Hode and before the fight. Likely, Romeo had wanted the same thing, to suss Vittoria out, to sense the edges of Matteo's plan or figure out why Matteo would make such a move. Are you prepared for the test of courage, Matteo? Romeo asked. Of course. With a Lavanda maid and a handful of defeated guardians? Quite the support system you've built up after all those years of wandering the streets, dodging responsibility. I imagine you're eager to rule the network with such workers behind you. Matteo almost laughed again. Wandering the streets? Dodging responsibility? As if Matteo hadn't spent the last decade working as hard as Romeo to one day rule the network. But Pear and Romeo had never acknowledged him. Part of their psychological warfare, no doubt. Matteo smiled. I'm very eager to change the network for the better. A twitch of a sneer ghosted Romeo's pale lips. Of course, he murmured silkily. It's easy to be arrogant when you have the luxury of ignorance, isn't it? I guarantee you a fair playing field, no traps. The entire thing is a trap. Romeo conceded with a slight nod. Regardless, I guarantee the honor of our tests and our match. And the honor of a landowner is a precious thing. Romeo said nothing at first. He opened his mouth, hesitated, and finally stated, 
Pear was too unwell to get out of bed today, or he might have come to meet her himself. With that, Romeo shuffled back. Mateo wanted to feel a stab of concern for Pear, but couldn't conjure it. Only a dull numbness lingered there. Besides, that random comment had to mean something. Why did Romeo want him to know? Forgive me, Romeo continued coldly, but I must be going. The East End rebels have burned down two landowner stores since your announcement last night. I'm to get the responsible parties on a pike. Vittoria didn't even flinch. Mateo's admiration for her warmed. Romeo walked away, his uniformed guardians following. Only one remained behind to watch Mateo's party and Romeo's back. Mateo stood there until Romeo transported away, and the final guardian followed. Vittoria stared at the spot they disappeared, deep in thought. Her trembling had subsided. Mateo wanted to reassure her, but didn't know what to say. Truly, was there any reassurance? Benat steps forward. Shall we go, Majesty? We may speak of this further at home. Yes. Vittoria turned to face him, a completely unreadable expression on her face. That seemed far easier to deal with than fear, so Matteo didn't question it. Thank you. For? For your loyalty. She frowned, but gave no response. Matteo ran a hand through his hair and sighed. Let's go home. It's been a long day already.